This mini session will have five very different teams. Oh, actually, my name is Gary Ragman. I'm from the University of Tartu, Geography Department, which is also ECP institution in Estonia. So, and uh, I have great, great pleasure to chair this session here. And we have uh, five pretty different, five, where is one? Uh, pretty different topics to discuss uh, in this mini session. Yep, excellent. And um, uh, presenters will have only four minutes. This is close to this three minute pitch, so it's <laughs> very short. <laughs> and um, uh, after that, um, I try to intrigate a little bit, uh, and maybe you have uh, questions if you really, really have to clarify something. So maybe we can arrange a microphone here. And then um, I will try to keep audience uh, uh, awaken and uh, involved. So I will ask after every every presentation uh, whether you're interested or your colleagues or your institutions to follow this topic uh, and this research in the future. So we'll have some feedback also how many fans you have in this audi audience. And as we have very limited time, so let's start. Uh, Tobias, please. That's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so probably you just need to use arrows, yeah? Oops. So good morning from my side. Thank you, Gary. I have three minutes to introduce uh, one of the new targeted analysis um, on the Alpine region. And uh, well, what are we doing there? The official answer is written here. Our objective is to develop a territorial vision and common spatial perspectives in the plural for the Alpine area and we have to to have a focus on sustainability and on the strengthening of territorial cooperation and even more the objective is to develop um, an instrumental toolbox um, how to work on uh, on perspectives on visions for regions also beyond the alpine uh, region some days ago we met in berlin for the formal kick off with our lead stakeholder in Berlin, the uh, ministry from uh, Romana, Katharina Erdmenger. Um, and in that ministry, you find uh, what, what you see here on the, on the screen. It's a 3D model from the Alpine region. It's a, it's a, it's a nice tool. You can project different maps on this uh, physical 3D uh, thing. And uh, during our formal kickoff, we discussed really about this um, 3D model and really the, the lead stakeholder formulated as one of the key demands that we have to, to reflect on the Alps as one geographical space uh, without borders. I think all of you know that uh, the morphological region of the Alpine, uh, of the Alps is really, um, has, has seven uh, nation states, it has a lot of uh, national borders, it is very fragmented in an institutional sense, but uh, on that map you don't see them and it's really, it's, um, it's an objective to reflect uh, in that sense. We are aiming to overcome political and institutional borders and in doing that we want to better link the Alpine Convention and the macro regional strategy and the Alpine Space Programme. That sounds a bit technical but it's a real important issue because you have the Alpine Convention as focusing really on the geomorphological Alps, so really the, the, the inner part of uh, where, where you have actually the, the, uh, the mountains and then you have the macro regional strategy that is going far beyond, uh, in particular in Germany and in France, uh, also in Italy where you have really some uh, metropolitan areas and really uh, uh, down in the valleys that are uh, participating here and so this is really this is one of the key uh, challenges to to bring these two different spatial perspectives together both in analytical and in um, um, political uh, ways yes the the question that I was asked to answer too is uh, how can we uh, involve uh, the stakeholders uh, actively and of course we have steering committee meetings, that's, uh, that's clear. And then we have, um, I think it will be in May, we will have quite a large uh, stakeholder conference with uh, representatives from all, all the involved regions and countries. Um, one of the key um, empirical elements will be a Delphi study with representatives and experts from all the regions involved there and uh, this is something that I'm really looking forward to. We will produce um, mental maps from, from the Alps uh, as they are now and, and uh, how the experts think that they should develop in future. 
And um, I'm really looking forward to the political process. Uh, we are in contact with uh, with all the institutions, and it's uh, it's an interesting time because uh, uh, Austria will not only be um, uh, having the uh, presidency of the uh, uh, of the EU, but also for uh, f uh, will play a major role for the Alpine Convention and for the macro region. And uh, we have already discussed very concretely how we can contribute to the to the uh, political process here uh, when when uh, contributing to the macro regional executive board when contributing to the permanent committee of the Alpine conference and of course commenting on the future of the Interreg Alpine space program and some others. So this is again the picture that you see. It's uh, the 3D model um, in, in Berlin and uh, there you see some stakeholders just discussing uh, uh, the Alps, uh, how they can develop and I think um, that will be quite uh, quite a strong point about the project. I'm happy not to be alone of course from, from Erlang Nürnberg uh, but we have an interesting consortium um, on the research side from, for example, from uh, Switzerland, we have University of Ljubljana in Slovenia, we have uh, Bolzano, the European Academy in, in Italy, and uh, we have uh, Thomas Dax from uh, Vienna, and I think it's, sorry, have I forgotten somebody? I hope not. So I think uh, I'm optimistic that we, can, that we can make it. Well, what challenges, of course, I could complain about uh, um, resources, uh, uh, but I don't do so. But the political and in institutional complexity in this region, that's really, that's really demanding. You all know it's uh, one one of the um, richest uh, cooperation areas uh, with a very complex uh, setting there, and uh, that's a challenge, but a challenge that I like. So I think that's within four minutes. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Uh, please, any questions? Short questions? No? Uh, I'm just wondering, um, um, uh, I was last summer in Aosta, and uh, this region seems really prosperous. A lot of prices are incredible. So why you need this? Well, is I've something happening in Snowbelt? It seems. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say cooperation is not only needed when you have socio-economic problems, but you, I think every region uh, needs cooperation, and uh, I really would underline it's not a luxury. You, you really need it everywhere, and I think the more borders you have, the more cooperation you need, and the Alpine region is really rich of borders, too. Mm -hmm. And then I would say, okay, you, you, you're right that the Alpine region is uh, comparably rich, but we have, of course, disparities there, too. We have east-west, we have north-south, and, of course, we have uh, the other higher parts and the lower mm -hmm. parts, and uh, it's not all uh, rich on on the same level, I would say. So, who would be interested about this topic? Please raise your hands. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah, 15%, 20%, thank you. Please. <coughs> so, yeah, uh, next, Stefano. Okay. Four minutes. Uh, good morning to everybody. Uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity to present this uh, uh, program. Ah, yes. Yeah. Huh? Uh, well, uh, I have to say uh, that uh, uh, just we have uh, uh, spoken about the most proper, prosperous region. Yeah. Well. Here is the worst, the worst region. We are moving to the to the most problematic area of uh, uh, of, uh, of Europe, particularly because we include also uh, lots of countries that are candidate countries that maybe they will include it into the European Union in a foreseeable future, maybe not. So uh, this is uh, exactly the point that we are focusing on the uh, region. I hope uh, now. This. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Uh, no, this is what's the other one. Oh, I don't know. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, anyhow, it's okay. These are the questions that ra were raised. Uh, I wanted to, to, to show you the, uh, the uh, outcomes, the main outcomes, but Maybe apparently... took some slides off. My I don't door. know. Is, is the other... I don't know. Blank. Oh, yes. 
Okay. Uh, you, uh, the, the main focus uh, is uh, connected uh, to two to me uh, macro regions, the Adriatic Ionian and the Danube macro region. And uh, our task is uh, to not only to identify and mapping typologies about the refugees and migration flows at the plural, but uh, also uh, to identify uh, and disseminate some uh, best practices regarding social economic inclusion in uh, that might be useful for uh, our stakeholders uh, in order to uh, develop a strategy about uh, ter territorial cohesion in, in, this, uh, in this region with uh, some recommendations that are expected at the end of, that, uh, of this research. When I was speaking about uh, flows, uh, I was speaking particularly about uh, the fact that uh, we have uh, uh, identified already uh, three main flows of, uh, uh, of um, migra uh, migrants and refugees. Uh, actually, uh, during the development of our collection of data, we have discovered that most probably we have to speak about four floors instead of three. Uh, the three main floors, uh, briefly, I can mention are uh, the following. The first one is connected to, to the uh, mobility within uh, the states of the region. So this means uh, uh, particularly uh, the, uh, connected to the urbanization, uh, the abandoning of the rural areas, uh, the population. But uh, this process uh, is not only taking place within uh, one state, but within the, the region, at the macro region in itself, because we have a mobility of people, for instance, let's say from Bosnia to Herzegovina moving to Serbia, or from Bosnia to Croatia, from Albania uh, to uh, other areas like Kosovo or in the north or vice versa. So there, are, uh, there is a mobility within the region that uh, is uh, uh, additional to the external mobility, is the third one. This is the international mobility, mobility of the transit that was summarized by the Balkan route, but within which the people, the local people also took advantage for their own uh, uh, mobility uh, activities to such an extent that, for instance, 130,000 Albanians, for instance, participated into the, uh, into the uh, flow uh, of the Balkan routes in order to uh, join uh, Austria and Germany. They were all rejected, but in any case, then they came back, and this is exactly Exactly the four, uh, the four uh, uh, flows that I wanted to mention, because uh, within the case studies that we wanted to uh, develop, uh, there is also one that is connected exactly on uh, uh, the uh, situation in Fiori, 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 Fiori Venezia, Giulia, and Slovenia, where we have to uh, consider the role of the people coming back, but they want to cross the Schengen area, and we are on the border of the Schengen. So this is the the reason. And one thing that we would like to address also is about the territorial cohesion, and I'm closing, uh, is uh, the fact that uh, uh, there is an interest uh, to see whether we can uh, exploit uh, in positively the skills of the uh, migrants for some specific area, uh, protection of area, environmental areas. Uh, I mean particularly the, uh, in the area of uh, hydro, hydrogen geological uh, instabilities, because we have an experience in Calabria and uh, in uh, Emilia-Romagna that might be useful for this. Thank you. Thank Short you. question. Who are your stakeholders? Who are the most interested stakeholders? Yeah, uh, stakeholders, uh, they have the regional, uh, regional uh, uh, authorities from uh, uh, the Adriatic Ionian Initiative, from the Danube, mm -hmm. from uh, Spain, from, uh, from Greece, from the Balkans, and uh, the partnership we have uh, are from uh, uh, Albania, the European University, from uh, the University of Thessaly in, uh, uh, in okay, Greece. In and, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, applause now. Yeah. Uh, interested bodies, please raise your hand. No one is interested about, okay, something's coming. Please come out from the, yeah, from those tablets. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so maybe 10, 15 percent. Thank you. Another very Italian, right? Yes, so it's a... You were active. Uh, thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. And uh, 
uh, welcoming the Link Pass project. It's a project that devoted to discover if uh, the present, uh, the uh, existing network of protected areas are able to support these uh, uh, new challenges in the Europe, uh, mostly for the post-2020. And uh, more and more, uh, the uh, feature that we have uh, in front of us uh, uh, on the base of uh, climate change mitigation, green economy, and so on. And uh, so it's, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Oops. Me? Ah, okay. Perfect. Sorry. I am a bit wow. technological in second generation. Uh, Link Pass, uh, this is uh, the flow of our uh, work. It's included a lot of uh, uh, academic people and uh, uh, research uh, institutes that work in the, uh, these uh, areas and uh, uh, mainly in the mountain area, but uh, non exclusively. Uh, we need to identify this uh, um, area as, uh, uh, on the basis of their characteristics, uh, but only for uh, uh, their uh, diversity, geographical diversity, but on the basis of uh, the impact that uh, MPIS produce uh, on the policy sectors, uh, and uh, including uh, on the basis of uh, stakeholders' uh, uh, demand, uh, the question uh, of uh, what uh, small and medium firms uh, works uh, and produce employment and grow in these areas, uh, and uh, how it's possible to include better and better them for the development, uh, sustainable development, uh, looking at uh, climate change mitigation and green economy by um, eco services, uh, infrastructure, green infrastructure, and the cultural, cultural services. Um, the, um, uh, the demand by the stakeholder that cover different level from local in Bulgarian and the international level is a very complex but clear. Uh, and in addition, there is uh, also the GCT demand, and uh, it's uh, uh, would like that we study not only indicator and not only um, all the characteristics uh, of the area, but also the new territorial governance models uh, in supporting uh, this uh, uh, economic and development in uh, that areas. And more and more, uh, uh, how it's possible to integrate public and private investment by the NPIS and uh, uh, to produce a good adaptation to the challenge. Challenges. And uh, we are uh, covering uh, and collecting data information indicator on the base of existing model and uh, using uh, not only the research activity but also the um, practical experience, our practical experience in these areas and uh, looking at the organization active participation in the managing active preservation uh, using also parallelly instrument as a SWOT analysis uh, to look at the concept and the, uh, the um, appropriate interpretation of uh, the main policy as uh, uh, biodiversity or climate change or protection policies uh, and involving stakeholders in the areas, uh, poor stakeholders that are pressing <laughs> to them, uh, focusing uh, on uh, in this investment possibility of investment by semi structuring the interview that uh, uh, they are uh, um, covering for us. And uh, of course, uh, we are at the first part of the result. We have uh, no uh, one size fit uh, all but solution, but a common methodological approach. And uh, we discover uh, that uh, small and medium firms uh, in these areas uh, as, um, are not only traditional firms, but also very, very innovative and we uh, compare the three level of uh, stakeholder participation. Many thanks. Thank you. Applause. Yeah, it's very short, I know. But uh, I have a question because um, in this country, um, um, when environmental people, environmental protection people, uh, they want to restrict something 
or not to allow to build something. So they set up new, new nature protection area. The last case was with the Real Baltic, uh, which is going to cost us some 70, 80 millions more extra. Yeah. So is your nature protection uh, people a bit more uh, business friendly? Because you, one of your uh, targets is to support local business development. Yes, there is a lot of uh, participation in this area. And uh, we are comparing also the spatial planning models that uh, permit people to discuss citizen citizenship, not only in the area, but also in the boundaries areas to have more participation, because in this area there is a low density uh, system, but they are very, very attractive. And this area uh, produces innovative models. For example, they are using a digital transition uh, under the um, new connection in okay, some but, cases. But are your environmental protection people more uh, positive towards business yes, development? Okay, are. thank you. I lucky you. <laughs> Thank you, Gary. And uh, hello, everybody. Um, let me start with a question. What are cross-border public services? Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to raise your hands. Uh, I think you did a lot of voting already uh, during the day and yesterday. So. Um, it seems to be a rather straightforward question at first glance, but trust me, already during the first three weeks of our research, we noticed there are many uncertainties persisting what is a cross-border public service. So this explains already why we will deal with CPS. Um, there is a research need because a lack of a precise understanding of the term, which in turn leads to a lack of consistent data and a European overview. And on top of that, um, border areas have definitely special service needs. So put yourself in the shoes of a stakeholder in a border region. Yeah. What could be their demand, their objective? They are, of course, interested in improving their position due to their location, whether they are disadvantaged or not. Not every border region is disadvantaged. Um, because of their special service needs, CPS are one approach to improving um, their position to tackle these uh, special needs they have. And our task as a targeted analysis is to support them in further developing their CPS. <coughs> what does this require? It requires that we get reliable data on operating CPS, to give them good examples, to show what really is CPS, what's not, and so on, and to obtain a sufficient in-depth understanding um, in order to support the very first steps of CPS development, because our project runs only for a year, and everybody of you know may, may know a cross-border public service is not developed within one year. So we can only kickstart something. Um, so what does this require? Um, the support must be based on a very intensive dialogue with our stakeholders in order to get there. And rather than going through the whole list of um, interactive involvement of our stakeholders you can see on the slide, I would like to focus on what are these actions for. Firstly, we want to take into account the individual starting points because not every of our stakeholder regions has the same level of experience in providing CPR. Some are rather experienced, others are much less experienced. We have to take into account the very uh, different regional needs due to their territorial features, starting with physical features, um, demographic characteristics, infrastructure development, or economic characteristics. And finally, their involvement is important to take into account the, diff the different uh, framing conditions both when it comes to regional traditions, 
how to provide services based on their legal and administrative backgrounds, as well as framing conditions with regard to different sectors, because CPS can be provided in many different sectors. Um, and this all needs to be incorporated for developing the recommendations towards the first steps. Thank you very much. Excellent timing. <laughs> Questions from auditorium? No, then I would ask. Uh, not even ask, but I know, we know what you're talking about. We have Ivangorod Narva in the eastern border. We have Valga Valka in southern border. And um, as I understood, we have had also some studies uh, in those localities. And, and uh, one of the biggest problems is how to convince national governments to well, allow something to do cross border. So uh, will you also uh, the deal national with that? government? National the governments, yeah. Um, we do not have national governments in the as stakeholders. Yeah, we have the regions in there. You, you do not need the national governments for each and every CPS. So it depends. For some, yeah. you need state agreements, interstate agreements, mm -hmm. sure, but not for all and everything. But so you will approach them. Sorry. You will approach national governments as well. Like we I will see it. what yeah, is necessary. I would that. Well, <laughs> we will see. First of all, we are now uh, conducting a stock taking of what are the interests of our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what are they really going for? And what is backed by their political mm -hmm. um, documents? What can be really achieved? And we will try yeah. to focus can talk on, later. Yeah, what on that. I have is some experience with that. realistic. Yep. Uh, <laughs> any fans of, uh, of uh, cross-border public services? I'm. <laughs> <laughs> OK, please. And. Thank you and good afternoon to everyone. Yeah. Um, E-health is um, gaining significant importance and um, its initiatives are becoming a crucial building block for making health sector much more efficient. Um, as a result, uh, this study aims to examine and provide evidence about um, the development of e-health solutions in the changing landscape of technology, territorial governance, and cross-border cooperation. Um, the study will address uh, the different stakeholder knowledge needs to better understand, firstly, the implementation of digital health solutions. It requires really a close examination of the challenges the city, region, or country is confronted with uh, in terms of policy, practices, or legal framework. Um, another aspect is related to data-driven healthcare and its peculiarities. Um, the growing uh, importance of digital health brings uh, not only opportunities, but also uh, challenges how to handle sensitive data um, or transferability of health data among the countries. And for example, in Estonia and um, Finland, the increasing cross-border movement of patients uh, creates necessity to analyze in depth the opportunities and challenges uh, for cross-border movement of um, health data. Um, also, it's important to relate to digitization in sectors beyond e-health, such as education or urban planning, and to really examine the transferability of good practices, which can be well transferred to health sector too. Finally, there's um, a need to um, understand of how digital solutions impact the quality of healthcare. Um, as concerns uh, the study, uh, we have planned a participatory approach throughout the study, uh, therefore cooperation with stakeholders, um, steering committee and other relevant organizations such as university, ICT experts, um, healthcare providers are crucial to ensure the involvement, information sharing and um, also the use of end result. And uh, just to mention that uh, the project is really fresh. 
We're just about to have our kickoff meeting next week. Um, but uh, the main outcome of the study will be comparative analysis of digital solutions and uh, roadmap of good practices uh, for designing future digital and data-driven health solutions, followed by policy recommendations for maximizing the potential of e-health solutions. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Mm. Time for questions. No. Uh, well, um, you will have next week kickoff meeting, kick right? Yes, correct. Uh, will be there are also um, health organizations like Sick Fund, some hospitals joining you? Well, we expect to have some observers joining the board. That's important. Uh, okay, yes, yeah? just mm -hmm. to have a full conversation yep. going on. Mm hmm. Well, voting can be done. Uh, well, it's probably impossible to make some conclusions on the basis of that. So I will just ah ah in. Uh, fans of uh, digital uh, health, please raise your hands. Who would like to follow this topic in the future? Agenting, you know? Oh, no. You will have a lot of fans in the future. Okay. Well, um, um, anything? No. No. Then thank you for your attention, and uh, we probably saved a few minutes. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. <coughs>